Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 31 of Firemind. So, it's going to be today that we're going to get our queen a proper throne room and everything she requires. We also have a lot of other things on our mind. I will move the duchess into a new apartment. She hated her dining room all the way anyways, so Uzol can finally get herself her proper place at the side of the queen. We go all the way upstairs, so this citizen's quarter here is finally receiving its flooring. While we're talking, people will be busy laying out the diorite, and up here, this is the new area that we're working out. So I decided to make this entire area here the throne room. I will not work without columns, but I will build them artificially. So I decided to just dig out the entire thing and then put in some nicely spaced out columns or whatever. I haven't fully thought that through yet. We have here the bed quarters of the queen, nicely behind, nicely snooked into the rear of the throne and we'll have room for sweet gemstone windows to look over the fortress. I, I really felt, felt like that was a super good spot for a, a bedroom. So we have down here the dining hall. That's where we can receive diplomatic uh, things. And we have this entire room here thought as an office. I felt like it might be a little bit weird to consider the throne room as the office, but the way that Dwarf Fortress is coded, I think, yeah, the throne room is pretty much the office of a queen. So we will have over here the hall of leggings, you know, the queen loves leggings. And down here we have the hall of caskets. So, you know, things that we need at the queen's place. We got here the new apartment uh, wing for the Duchess Uzol. So, oh, I need to space that out differently. That is not making me happy. So, yeah, we're going to make it like that. Here it's a very simple thing. We get a, um, I think I'll make this one the office. Here we have the dining hall and here I'll take the bedroom. All will be, of course, finely polished out and a lot of uh, luxury will be used. It's been just like, when I checked out the apartment of Uzol down here, it's really a good apartment. We could actually make it fit for her tasters by just uh, swap out, by, by just swapping out the diorite blocks with silver blocks. Damn. That would be all, all that it requires to make this a snuggly place for her again. But then I felt like I don't want to play my main protagonist that dirty, you know? She's, after all, the one person that ought to bring damnation and chaos upon the elves up here. We, we, we started the entire story like that, so I cannot give her some, some cramped end thing. She... She needs to be close to the queen to drip poison into her ears and stuff like that. Jokes aside, story-wise, I consider that the queen and the duchess will have quite a lot of talks here. As, after all, Firemind is still Uzol's thing to manage. Like, she is the one in charge over the fortress itself. Whereas the queen is, of course, in charge of the kingdom. So they don't really have any uh, conflict here. But, uh, well, we're going to have a personality analysis of the queen to check out how these things uh, will work out. So it's... It's the queen. So let's check her out personality-wise. I have a person very rarely moved by curiosity. Mm -hmm. She's made deeply uncomfortable by differences in culture or appearance, so that might be really one trigger to shove her over to elven warfare. Often nervous, tends to be swayed by the emotions of others. Oh my god, this is very fitting to the plot so far. She tends to be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things. Okay, that's why we cannot wage war directly. She likes to keep things practical without delving too confident. Without delving too deeply into the apps. Well, that's not really interesting. 
blah. She takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful. So all the gifts that we gave to her were pointless. Oh, well. She occasionally overindulges. Okay. Mind wearing something spare. She tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions. All right. So... She's currently more rude, shameless, more fearless, all right. So let's see, that that really sounds to me like we could totally go for a, uh, for that plot here with her. From the beginning to the end, she's a perfect receiver for, for all the, for all the lies about uh, elves taking her artifacts. Okay, so let's see, another thing that was interesting to me, Spring 129, so... I really wonder, I think 129 must have been still with uh, Praise Lashes. I can't remember, sadly, anymore if I had Praise Lashes as a fort where I had the Queen hosted, but whatever. So all in all, we can see that this will go down as planned. The Queen will be really more like a... Uh, like arson, like an arsonist in this conflict more than anything else. Okay, so the bedrooms here will be finished once it's time for that. I meant to check back with uh, or dear Uzul and I wanted to check with the preferences. I know of the Bismuth Bronze, Yellow Zircon, so that is probably something that we can work on. But apart from that, there is uh, no particular flooring that would please her directly, except for bismuth bronze. But I, I sadly don't have that stuff today. So I, oh, 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 whoopsie. So I want to go for a different approach here. So I want to go copper. There we go. A copper floored apartment sure sounds darn nice too to me. So we're going to put the stone cutting task back to the uh, squadron of legendary stone cutters. Jeez, we have so many of these. <laughs> Lovely. So yeah, we're we're going to assign only the best of the stone cutters to smooth out this place. It'll take a hot minute for the copper ingots to be produced. They are configured to be remade once they are empty, so I just had a relatively low stockpile, but I figured, why not copper? It's uh, quite abundant here. It is relatively valuable, surely way more valuable than any um, any stone that I could use. It's a wonderful thing about metal floor. It's just per se more valuable as a metal bar is just valuable, you know? And the copper has a nice warm color to it. So, for the throne room, well, we need to work with more exclusive materials, of course. So, I think I'm going to start out with a bottom layer of granite. It's simply because I want to be able to place proper ac accents to this thing, and we're just going to overwrite the granite with something more appealing wherever we can. I want to build this thing bit by bit and uh, carefully, therefore, we do it like that. So, let's see. Eagles and a fissure dwarf is fighting. Ooh. So, agitated eagles attacking our dwarves. Things are getting worse and worse here in, uh, in Firemind. Nature doesn't like our highway. Well, we don't like you too, on high, uh, Nature, so that's okay. <sighs> so I unassigned the Fisher Dwarf as I want to not put him into unnecessary risk. Alright, let's have another look into this wonderful woodworker skill, and I need to, to check. Yeah, it's citizens only. The other day I was wondering if I... Uh, I tossed and turned at night in my bed and I was wondering, is everybody allowed to enter the new woodworkers guild? And sleep again. So, jokes aside, this is uh, really important for me that the guild halls are accessible to everybody. So we have everybody 
crawling up and down the staircase here to get the work done. Everybody is working on the throne room. I really do like that. Okay, sweet. So all in all, I do think that the copper flooring looks way better than I anticipated. It's just the monetary value of copper is relatively low. We would have been monetarily way better off with, for example, I think Bilon is something we should be able to do with the copper and the Galena. It's been a while. I'm pretty sure we have made that already. Yeah, we did. We did, of course. So, yeah, well. So this place here, this little area there, we're, uh, we're seeing here the next citizen's district. So there's a lot of commotion down here going to be, at least. And I'm just going to start placing down some doors, but I'm not going to go into, uh, into furnishing this out. Placing down rooms is something, uh, placing down doors is something we can really quickly do. I recently had the feeling as if we didn't need that many rooms to begin with, but I don't know. I still want to be ready for, for more people here. Okay, so downstairs here, the connectors to the bridges have still to, uh, are still to be made. I haven't, uh haven't found time to do this. The preparations for this uh, wonderful area up here were pretty time consuming, but I think it's absolutely worth it. So we're definitely going to use the artifact throne here for the queen. So I really hope that the uh, farmer's guild hall will, will survive the uh, loss of that thing. An agitated Kea head. How the hell did that get down here? I suppose the cats were at work again. If in if in doubt, it's most likely the cats. Speaking about the cats, jeez, do we have much of animals. Wow. Mind you that we're running auto butchering, and uh, these get uh, culled automatically. So this is just the standard uh, standard flock. We have a nice meat production here happening. So let's see. And after this thing has been dislodged. Blop. Grand Gale Hall. Good. So we, we do need that thing for the throne room, you know. I cannot imagine a throne room without a proper valuable throne. So we're going to place down now the, the direct, uh, direct approach to the throne. So... Definitely gonna do that with silver for the time being. So let's make that something like that. And probably I want the entire back of this also floored like that. There it goes. Probably I'll be overwriting this with a coal lacing here on the sides. So we have a narrow path towards the throne, but I don't know. We'll see about that the other day. Okay, but I really do need the uh, roaring down before I can place the throne. So there we go. And as you see here, copper is being melted while we're waiting for the other parts. So let's see how is my metal stockpile. It is a little bit low on copper, huh? So let's go mining copper, my men. Because now is the time that we don't need to hold ourselves back anymore. We can just pick up whatever we want to as we are now capable of holding these areas under control. Practically, that's all. So we're going to be digging out here a lot, of, uh, a lot of that malachite. And we have a gem cutter on his way to an artifact. That is going to be quite interesting. Look, the drip stains have made a tree spawn. 
It's one of the things I love about this game. All right, I think this is inaccessible. We need to put down the mining command here. Otherwise, they cannot reach. That would be a tragedy. They need to go up here to this platform to mine it out. And obviously, this goes here, like that. But this is all open space. The caverns, reading the caverns in this game mode is sometimes really, really complicated. Hey, boys, there was supposed to be uh, copper in here. I'm deeply disappointed. So I think we need to put up a stairwell here to, to reach that thing. All right, so Monop or Barefop. We're, uh, we need to check back with you, my good friend. Who are you, actually? And what are you working on? It would be a shame to miss your masterpiece made out of one rough morion well well some of us don't need that much to create masterworks he obviously came late into uh to boat thrower he must have been one of the people that replaced the dying people in boat thrower because 133 that was uh pretty much before we completed the bridge and then 139 one of wiped girder came over here. He's a proficient uh, gem cutter by now. He is also going to be a legendary gem, gem cutter after that. Well, let's see, what kind of relations do you have? He's believing in Zon, and that's a, a rare one here. He said, apart from that, well, just a passing acquaintance for most people. Well, He's with us for a couple of years already, and, well, must have been around when the Cyclops attacked us. And became a father this uh, while he was in this fort. Well, let's see, Monum, what you are crafting. Quite curious by now. Okay. So, back down to the danger town. Ish. I mean, it's, it's really not that bad anymore. We're going to go and... What are we going to use here, huh? We're just going to stick with our regular guns. And... Since this is not near any civilized areas or, or something like that, I'm just going to use the locally sourced materials, as this is always the easiest way to fix the hole that you just punched into the wall. We came for the Malachite, and I still need way, way more than that. So I just noticed that we can drill another stairwell up here. and then just uh, excavate the pillars. All right. So back upstairs we go. There's still a lot of uh, work to get done. Oh, I totally missed out uh, talking about the outpost liaison. This guy will live over here. As I have figured, the outpost liaison is a man of the people or a woman of the people. And therefore, I find it the most fitting if that person is having her or her, his honors, their honors, up here. Because among the people, that's where I feel like the outpost liaison is uh, supposed to be around. Huh. So, he created a gemstone door. And while he created something unique to dwarven kind, he went away snickering and uh sniveling that spine all right monom wiped girder you stay a weird one suit walk the lucky moth all right whatever my dude whatever so the eagle has met its end while running into one of our axe lords that's happening 
these days, shockingly often, that people get attacked by by animals in broad daylight. So this place is really no joke. This series is also called The Savage Lands for a reason. I love to piss off savage biomes because that's just so much fun. You get constantly attacked. This biome is quite mild, but, uh, well... Alrighty. So we're digging our way upstairs to excavate the treasures of the caverns. This is truly one extremely different way of doing things. I I didn't work like that in the past ever before, but uh, well, every mine is a little bit different. So I want to get over there too, so we're going to we're going to work on that. I don't want to compromise that one entry point. I mean, I could just breach a wall, hole into the wall here. Oh, I couldn't because it's all upstairs. Well, I could breach a hole up here, but uh, that way the baddies would have every way to enter our, our base, and I don't like the idea of that. I like it if everybody who wants to get close has to go through the sex of holding or controlling. Sorry. Sex of controlling. I, I I totally meant to say that. So they control the zone. That's why they are named like that. Duh. Well, let's put the work back on the top side area. Okay. So I really feel like this thing here needs a sort of a sort of a limiter and I think if I go for that width it's going to be too wide for this uh, hallway but I'm going to try first so here goes the bituminous cold lacing like that might be actually way better than I think it is going to be so Then we need to construct the throne. We're going to be putting that back here. Then I want that silver flooring to extend all the way here. As I feel like, come on, if you're walking towards the throne room, you should be already greeted by a certain sense of awe. And since we cannot put doors here, otherwise we'll have to put a silver wall here. It's in there too for the doors to get to be held. It is what it is, boys. Alright, so we need more floors back here. Oh, I can't do this like that. So, for the bedroom, only the finest lead flooring will be applied. I don't know why that is such a high-value good, but I know that it is. And for the dining hall, or, yeah, that's going to be the dining hall. Let's see, what can we use? I want something prestigious that we haven't used yet too much. So, oh yeah, Billon. Here it goes. Right. Okay, so there's still quite some uh, work to get done here. This is, after all, one of the uh, bigger projects of ours. So we are going to assign legends today for the engravings. There is now somebody who's as legendary as Silob have a second legendary engraver my friends I'm proud of him all right so in the in the upcoming next year we will see the first caravan that reaches the capital of the towers of age I'm really looking forward to see whether or not our income of um, 
our income of, of metal will become better like that. Alrighty. So, this is... Uh, I love the contrast of black and white. Just feel like the... Uh, it's a shame that vanilla metal floors just look that bad. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> I can't stop myself from that impression. Vanilla floors just... Vanilla metal floors just look horrible. Anyways, I need to delete these, as these will be most likely not staying. Well, probably not. I don't know. So let's stamp some Eurist faces on that one too. And give that Roman area a couple of faces as well. So that's one of the problematic things about Dwarf Fortress. Every decoration, every engraving on the floor looks like the face of a Eurist. I mean, okay, we, we all like how, how our dwarves look, but uh, pretty sure you see the problem. just as much as I do. Also, one thing that I totally want to see fixed in the future versions is that Cavern Floor gets its own distinct coloring back. In the ASCII version, you have different colors for each and every floor. This is Chert Floor. It should look like the walls, but all the floors in this game, if you don't build something on top of them, they have this uh, bluish color. That's something that really annoys me since a long, long time, but, uh, well, there is a mod for it, let me know. I'm really looking forward to that mod. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put down the queen's bed over here. We're going to place down now the necessary things for the well-being of a monarch. So, let's see. All these places require doors, otherwise they won't work. So, well... I think this one here was a mistake. I need to... Let's see, can I just place a new plate on top of that and the face is gone? We'll see about that. All right. So, at least we're we're getting the basics down. The queen has an office and the bedroom and all the things. It's just not as uh, not as pompous as we needed to. But well, she does like her throne room. There we go. Great start, isn't it? So. We just have to pluck in a dozen of uh, pieces of furniture still. I bet that before this is over, we're going to require so darn many cabinets and chests and pretty much everything. I'll be just guessing now and putting in as many of these as I think it needs. Not quite sure though, in all honesty. But I'm, if I remember correctly, it wasn't less than six. So, a weapon rack, and an armory rack in the background. I think this should really look nice. And then we put a statue back behind the throne. Of course, a statue of herself. And maybe her husband, let's see. So... Looks like the Spearmaster took care of another agitated animal. Whoa, wait a sec. That sounds like a uh, more serious thing. So, yeah. Boys, we got agitated mountain goats. They're moving into the food. 
agitated chinchillas and mountain goats are attacking the base. <laughs> All right. It's the Savage Lands, my boys. It's the Savage Lands. All right, let's take down the... Let's take down the hostiles. Bam. There we go. Take this, nature. So... I want to check back with what gets butchered here now. I also want to... Let's see. Please tell me. Oh yeah, it, it, it's being butchered. Nice. So we're definitely going to be putting up a few more butchers workshops in the vicinity here. So that if anything gets killed, there is a high likelihood that it will get processed. It's a shame to, to not use those majestic creatures, you know. Gudo, I think we are on a really, really good spot to leave today's episode as it is. So the only thing that I want to do before I leave you friends for today is I want to see how unhappy slash happy the queen is with the baseline things here. That somehow didn't work. There we go. Alright, how bad is it? Hit me. So, we got a pretty good start. We got three chests to few, <laughs> two more cabinets. I eat weapon wrecks and armors now. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're gonna be fixing that next episode. The outpost liaison also needs a place to, needs also a lot of gear. The the moment when your fort has a uh, has a queen slash king uh, arriving is always a moment when you know things get a lot more more micro heavy. So let's see if we can rip out that piece of art here, or if we have to live with it now. Anyways, it's time to outro. My good friends, I. Appreciate you paying me your uh, attention and watching this series. I'm sorry, the bracelet distracted me. And I hope you had a good time. Drop me a comment. Would be really, really awesome to hear from you. And as usual, leave a thumbs up for the algorithm so other Dwarf Fortress lovers can find their way here too. And last but not least, check out the subscription, descriptions, and... Patrol, Patrol, exactly. Paypal, Patreon, and the other things, the donation links. Thanks if you are supporting, and thanks for being around and watching this video until the very end. I hope you had a good time. I appreciate you hanging out here, and yeah, come on on by next time when we will be most likely starting to do some really nice stuff in the caverns. Can't wait. See you there.